finding signs of beaver. Here's some old sign. This old tree. It's probably several years old that that was taken down. But there's fresh sign right near where I pulled my yak up. I don't see any beaver lodges in this area. So I'm going to have to go into the swamp to see if I can find it. Here's the fresher sign. This is probably from last fall. You see the gnaw marks. The swamp's out that way. First off, I can't express enough the importance of knowing your area a little bit, knowing something about it, letting someone at home know where you're going, having some essential gear with you at all times, and taking your time and being safe. Know what dangers or hazards are out in the area you're going before you go. Spider crawling on me. Let's show you where I'm at. Yeah, this is uh, Nastyville. Just surrounded by swamp. Nastyville. One of the five W's and that's wigglies or creepy crawlies. There's little things that slither, that bite, that sting. They're my first level concern. I keep my eyes out for them. Now, swamps like this are the home of poisonous snakes. This one only has one type of poisonous snake. You have to go a little further south to get the second type. The type that's here is the timber rattler. They den up in these swamps during the winter time. As spring comes, they come out and they sun themselves on perches in the sun, on logs, on little islands. And as summer approaches, they move onto higher ground to feed. So that's one of my concerns. But even more than that would be your biting, stinging insects. They're more common than the timber rattler. So I'm going to keep my eye out for wasps and hornets. They like to make their nests right in these low bushes and trees in a sunny spot. They got water and they got plenty of paper to make their nests with. This is a prime area for big nests and I've seen them big, real big. So yeah, I dropped my pole in this muck and I've been fishing around for about 10 minutes and finally I got it. Here it is. Ugh. That's part of the problem out here. Narrow little channels, but they're very deep. And that was down at the bottom. Got it out. Losing this pole would have been a real buzz kill. Because <laughs> I use this all the time. Lightweight collapsible. Got to have one of these when I'm out here. And uh, it is deeper here than it looks what you have is you have like little clump islands and channels that run between them out here so you can get the yak through here but it's very difficult it takes time patience and uh, a lack of fear <laughs> uh, you can see I'm in a really tight spot in the swamp here but there's the beaver lodge right there just gotta push my way through here well here's the the big lodge. I found a smaller lodge in a different part of the swamp, but here's a nice big one. You see it's in the middle of the swampy area here. It's about two to four feet deep there. And I found a nice spot to pull the yak up right alongside the beaver lodge. If I stepped off here, I'd go down waist deep right there. But uh, you can see my yak is rigged up in different ways. I brought quite a bit of gear for this trip. It's just a little day trip. Come out here and do a little swamp bug out and think about what I would use, what I would need to survive out here if need be. But you can see I've got three fishing poles, two collapsible and one that I just bought recently that I'm trying out. Got my dashboard with a camera mount on it. I've got rigging on the front of the yak to hold down a catch cooler. I did bring a catch cooler for the back, it's strapped down, and a deployment bag. See the way I have this rig, the catch cooler is strapped down real tight. 
my deployment bag is actually strapped to the catch cooler and the rigging that the catch cooler is strapped to. So it's not going anywhere. And what a club and a pole. Got my water type box in there. And I did bring a cooler. I've got water, but as you can see, there's plenty of water around. So I made my way over to the other side of this beaver lodge, and I'm looking for a place to sit down. This looks like a nice spot, so I'm going to check it out. And that's a good way to check things out. Take a walking stick or a pole or something, branch, and bang around in there to see if there's any snakes, insects, etc. No snakes or anything like that, no big spiders, but I do see a lot of ant activity. So this is a no-go for me. I just don't want ants crawling all over me. I'll find a spot right here on the lodge. This looks but, good uh, for me. Also, your, your blood suckers, your biters and stingers, ticks, fleas, chiggers, deer flies, horse flies, they can be a real nuisance. So the cedar provides an oil that's going to help prevent insects from landing on you. It's not foolproof, but it does help. I'm at the far end back of a lake into a swamp. So if I get hurt here, I got to get out of the swamp, which is going to be tough, especially if you're hurt. Got to get across the lake. I got to get to my truck. I got to drive quite a ways before I can get the proper care if, if something serious happened to me out here. So yes, safety is priority out here. Safety, safety, safety. Uh, just because I do things, I don't recommend everyone do what I do. I grew up in this kind of environment. I'm very, in my opinion, skilled and knowledgeable about being out here. If you don't know this place, don't go alone. I, that's one piece of advice I will give. Don't go alone. I do, but that's me. So I thought through all my possible hazards and dangers. Next, I want to move on to the four essentials, the essentials for life, shelter, water, rest, and food in that order in most cases. Of course, that can change with the time of year, the climate, the area you're in. Shelter, number one. Not a whole lot of options in a swamp. You're surrounded by water and muck, and there's few high, dry spots. If I had the opportunity, I would want to move out of the swamp for shelter. Try to find some high ground on the edge of the swamp. But I'm stuck here. Got this beaver lodge, that's one high dry spot, which is a little bigger than anything I've seen out here so far. This is a big opportunity right here. I would probably shelter up on this beaver lodge. The other option I have, I have my yak with me. I can lay in my yak and sleep. I can cover myself. I've got mosquito netting and I have a tarp as well as a poncho and a couple other options. But they're my options immediate. Uh, if I had to build shelter, there's plenty of wood, there's plenty of grass and limbs. I could take a little spot like right here and I'll show you that. I've got this spot right here where I have a log this way, a log that way. I could begin laying limbs down here and build a platform basically to hole up on. And I have trees around it that I can build a cover, build a canopy basically with these trees and limbs that I find out here. Plenty of grass. I can lay grass down on top of my platform. I mean, that's the beginnings of a shelter. And yes, hey, finding this beaver lodge, I don't even have to do a lot of work. Got driftwood here. We got some poles. I can make spear, digging stick, poles for shelter, poles to lay on, firewood. There's oh, dead stands out here, and there's dead falls for building fire making, etc. Plenty of tinder. You got your dried grasses. You have your inner and outer bark of your cedar. Use the inner bark of the large cedars. Get into that inner bark. It's dry. Fluff it up. Outer bark of the small cedars. Fluff it up. Good tinder. Bow and drill. Look for your light, airy woods. Non-resinous. Now, cedar can be resinous, so you got to look for the inner part of the cedar to make a bow and drill out of. There are some of your resources. My next essential is water. I brought enough water for a couple days a day, if need be, but I'm surrounded by water. And yes, this water is usable, even though it seems somewhat stagnant. It is moving a little bit, 
but better than that it is in a cedar swamp and the cedar swamp has high content of tannins and acid which makes it very uncomfortable for harmful bacteria, protozoa, etc. And there's not a whole lot of bird activity here so I'm not worried about it. This water can be treated very easily with a little bit of filtering and then hey either a filter that you brought in or a boil. I recommend boiling your water at the very least if you're uncertain of what it contains. Uh, obviously water is not a concern for me. I brought some. I have plenty of ways. In, in fact I have uh, some iodine tablets also apart from the filter and apart from the cup to boil in. So water is not a concern for me. I could hole up here for quite a while when it comes to water. Oh, it's mush.